In the first video, we approached modeling this using a direct polygon modeling approach, where it was a manual setup of all those rounding fillets and rounded geometry. But in this case, we're going to approach the same model partially, and we're going to use modifiers this time around in case you've never used them. I'm going to start off with the same plain piece of geometry. Let's tab to go into edit mode. And first, we're going to give it some thickness. Now I want to go into edge mode and let's deselect this back edge. Hold the shift key to deselect that. Now press the E key and press Y. Now in this particular case, it's extruding along the local Y axis. If you're going to note right here, it says local. I happen to have my orientation set to local, which means I have to tap Y a second time to go along the global axis. So that is going to change whether you have to click it once or twice, depending on what that orientation is set up here. So click, and there we go. Okay. Now, because we're going to use a modifier, I want to come in and set a loop cut there and a loop cut there. And we're going to explain why that is in just a minute. But the first thing that I want to do is select these two primary corners that have that big radius. We're going to switch over into vertex mode because now we're going to set down here in the data object properties a vertex group for those. And it's important to have non-selected vertices in between these two groups so that these act as islands. So let's come over here and I'm going to call this group um, main corner radius. We need to click assign. And there we go. So let's come in now and come down to our modifier stack and let's come over to generate. And we're going to use bevel. And by default, bevel is just going to do everything and it's going to be a really large amount. So let's take this to half an inch. It's still pretty large, but we're going to restrict this now by coming down from angle and we're going to go to vertex group. And we need to tell it which vertex group to restrict that edit to, and we want to go just to that corner set of vertices. So let's come into the front, and we can fine tune that if we want that to be, say, just a little bit larger to match more closely. Now we can come in and set the actual value that we want in terms of resolution, and I'm going to make that pretty large at maybe 24. So that is now something that we can make a change to downstream, which is a benefit. We're also going to come in and go into shading mode. And this is where I'm going to leave edit mode. Let's turn on shade auto smooth. And then let's jump back in by pressing tab. We want to come down to shading. And this is a case where we are going to use hard normals. And keep your eye kind of locked in right down here when I turn hard normals. It gives us a little bit of a shading difference here. This area is now perfectly smooth. We're going to talk about dealing with surface normals in, in a tutorial that's going to follow this. Uh, some people ask, Chris, why didn't you use hard normals when you were using the beveling function in the first tutorial? And we're going to talk about that in a tutorial to come, but primarily I wanted to show you just modeling using geometry where you didn't have to worry about messing with normals in any way, shape, or form, apart from letting the geometry determine how the shading was functioning on that surface, okay? So you can see in this method, I didn't worry about putting any bounding geometry in. That's kind of a benefit of this approach that we're using. Let's come into edge mode, double click to select these edges, which are going to perform a new modifier that's going to give us a rounding around this outside. So we need to come over. I'm going to switch to vertex mode so we can clearly see those vertices. Come over down to the data object properties. In the vertex group, click new again, and we're going to call this a face plate edge boundary. Click assign. That's very important to remember that. And then we'll come back up here. And let's add another modifier. It's over here. Let's go to bevel again. I'm going to turn this off temporarily just so that we don't see things happening, which can be kind of confusing. Make sure you're in edge mode. Let's take this down pretty far. I'm going to do 0.2 inches. 
and we're going to switch again back to vertex group. Now, I'm not using weighting in this particular tutorial. It's similar, but a little bit different in how it functions. So let's come down to vertex group and then let's select faceplate edge boundary as the restriction group. And let's turn this back on and there we can see that. Now we just need to come in. Let's set this to point one we can begin playing with this. In fact, what I'm going to do is switch back into an outline mode. And I want that to match generally pretty closely to my template. So maybe we'll do 0 0.09. I think that works pretty well. And then we just set up the actual number of segments. And there we go. Okay, now we just need to remember to come down here and do hard normals. This means that it will create normals on the curvature here that come up to this large flat area that will keep this large flat area flat. And again, I'm going to cover this in more detail in the next tutorial, but for now, let's just go ahead and click hard normals tab, and then we can come up and look at this in shading mode. And now what's nice is that I can come up if I've decided I want to make a design decision, I can change this and then we can just play with this value until we get something that we like. So there's a bit of a non-destructive editing here. Since we had created these cutouts in the previous version, I'm just going to reutilize them. Let's jump in, take a look at our mesh again. I'm going to go into outline mode to kind of a wireframe view. In the first tutorial, I talked about the fact that we were manually putting cuts in here because polygons don't like to have holes in them. I just want to show you why we went to that work. If I come over and I select all of our cutouts and I just do a knife project now, you can see what Blender is doing is it's creating all of these cuts and we want to do a better job than that. So this is where I'm going to select this loop. Let's kind of zoom in so we can do this more accurately. G X press the B key, click, and then come to the center. Okay, that's right on the center. Now we're going to run into a problem here. Let's take a look at this. The vertex groups are going to get slightly messed up temporarily. So let's come in and add a new loop. K key, click, press the Z key to constrain, and then the C key to do a through cut. Click, and hit return, and then we see something go a little bit haywire. It's added some vertices to some of our vertex groups in a way that we don't want to happen. So let's come down here. Let's deselect everything and come up to our main corner points. Do a select. You can see these vertices have been added to the corner area that we don't want. So we'll select these, come over and remove them. Okay, now let's come down to the next set. We do a select. We have uh, right here in the middle, this vertex has been added, so let's remove that. Okay, so there we go. Come into the front view. We just need to put this into place. So let's select that loop, double click it, G, X, B, and then snap that into position. Okay, now we're ready to project. So I've already got these items selected for projection. We're in polygon edit mode, so we just come to mesh and we come down to a knife project and get those in place. But now we've developed a bit more of a problem again with our vertex group. So let's select, in fact, I'm gonna turn all of these off in vertex mode here. Let's select all of these internal vertices and let's just come and click remove on each of these to make sure it isn't being assigned to any of those perimeter groups. Okay. So there's a bit of management that goes on with these vertex groups, but now we're ready to come in and do the work on the cutouts. Let's turn off the template. We don't really need that right now. And let's focus in this area. Let's select these. In fact, we need to extrude these E key, extrude those in a bit, X, and we'll delete those. Let's come back into edge mode, select here, and here, and let's also do here and here. And then we've got these two vertex groups. 
with the vertex in between so they'll, they'll function as kind of islands. So we're going to create a new vertex group and we'll call this files one and two and we assign them. That's very important. Now we can come back over, deselect and sort of zoom in so we can see this happening. Now we want to add another bevel modifier. Let's turn it off temporarily. And then we're gonna go back from angle down to vertex group, select dials one and two. Let's take this way down to a much smaller value. This face plate's maybe five inches. So that's kind of your reference. We'll call this dials one and two, and then we'll turn it back on. And then let's just come in and give this a value. And we need to make sure again and turn on in shading hard normals. And you can see exactly kind of how that gave us that nice blending. And again, in the next tutorial, we're going to look at this in greater detail so you understand more clearly what's happening with those. But now we can come in and change those at will. And the beauty about this is you can mix and match the technique that I showed in the first version with this second version. So I think, let's extrude this out, X. For this one, I would approach it using the same methodology that I had done on the first one, because we're going to be mixing bevels and we're going to be overlapping beveling techniques. So in this one, I would approach it using the same process that I did in the first one where we manually put in two one method bounds and then we came in and manually change this to something like 8.5 I manually put in that boundary right there because, let's switch this back over to one, because this one is going to end up again with multiple techniques applied to it, and it's going to get a little bit, it would be too challenging to try and put overlapping uh, modifiers on here. It just wouldn't work quite right. So that's why I wanted to show you this, because you can mix and match this technique use some modifiers, use some direct polygon modeling. And I'm not going to finish it because I just wanted to demonstrate this. But in the next tutorial, we're going to talk more hardcore about normals themselves.